Okay. All right, we're rolling. We're rolling. What's, What's up, up, guys? It's your boy Corey Kareem here at the Podcast Summit 2024 with your guy David Shans. I am here with the lovely Jessica Hurley. I saw this woman grace the stage yesterday, and I was absolutely blown away. But Jess, please tell the people who you are and what you do. Hi, Corey. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I'm really, really glad I got an opportunity to meet you and connect with you. Yeah. Um, I'm the founder of Epic Media Network. It's a podcast agency and podcast network. So we manage podcasts, we tell stories, but primarily for incredible creators that are creators, change makers, entrepreneurs, experts, storytellers, authors, speakers that are doing really incredible things in the world already. And they just want to add a podcast to their marketing channels, um, but they want to do it really well obviously, because they're already doing really great stuff in the world. And I'm also the host of my own podcast called Rich in Real Life, so that I can just, yep, yep. And I have a really unique story about that too, so you can tap in with me about that in a minute. Yeah, um, because I I definitely want to have you on a full podcast, because we're we're in a unique setting right now. So cool. Where you could just pull up and just record with someone cool and awesome like Jess. (laughs) So Jess, the name of my podcast is Three Questions. I'm going to ask you three really really quick questions. (laughs) So my first question is, why this business? Why podcast agency? Where does that passion, drive, motivation come to do that? Absolutely. So um, I had I was dating someone in 2017 that was like, hey, you should start a podcast. And he was an entrepreneur as well. And I was like, no reason for me to start a podcast. I'm a nonprofit director. I don't mm-hmm. have a story to tell. And he was like, it's not about the story. It's the fact that every time someone comes over here, um, they end up on the couch for hours talking to you. Like they're just, people are just, you know, want your, your feedback, your advice, your, and I was like, ah, and I'm just like everybody else. I I recorded an episode, listened to it, trashed it and was like, I'm not doing that. It's ridiculous. Like nobody wants to hear from me. And, um, fast forward a year later, long story short, um, I had my son prematurely three months early. We almost lost him. He ended up in the hospital for four months, three months. And, um, when I got out of that, I told God that if he let my son survive, I would do everything for the rest of my life, um, proving to him why. If he was resilient enough to make it through this, I would spend the rest of my life proving to him why. And so as soon as he got out, I started my podcast. I also did a TEDx. Like All this happened in three months after my son came home. Wow. So I started my podcast, which wasn't called Rich in Real Life at the time. Um, and this speaks to people allowing themselves to evolve, people seeing where they're at, like just starting somewhere. My original podcast was called The Stranded Phase because I didn't want to talk to people about their wins because I had met enough people winning at that point. I wanted to know, what do you do when you're crying on the floor? What do you do when you can't pay your payroll? What do you do when you invest a lot of money into an idea and it doesn't work out? I want to know what people are doing when it doesn't work because I see a lot of people talking about what works. I want to know what happens when it doesn't work (laughs) and how you survive that because that's your ego, that's your money, that's your... You know, that's the confidence you build off of your momentum. And if your momentum isn't working, then what do you do? And so I had a podcast called The Stranded Phase. And within six to eight months, um, I had a pretty good following to have 1,500 followers. I had a lot of listeners. And this is how the agency was birthed was I'm just committed to it because I'm I'm starting to love it, as I'm sure you do. And I ask a woman to be on my show that has over 200,000 followers. And she says, yes, we do the show, comes out. She asked me if she could call me. I'm still at my corporate job at this point. Yeah. After the show comes out, she calls me while I'm at work one day and I walk outside and I, I say, hey, what's what's up? She's like, what the, what the fuck did you do? I said, what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. And she's like, I'm getting nonstop DMs about this podcast episode we recorded. And I'm like, oh, well, that's your audience. Like you got right. quadruple the followers that me. Right. And she's like, no, you don't understand. I launched a podcast six months ago and I'm not getting this type of attention, but yours comes out and I'm getting a ton of attention. What did you do? And I was like, what did, how did you do your podcast? And she explains it to me. This was f- six years ago. And I'm like, oh, well, just based off what I know, you did it wrong. And she's like, what do you, what do you mean I did it wrong? And I'm like, well, you should have done this, 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 and this. And she's like, oh, no, no, I don't have time for that. Can I pay you to do it? Mm. And I was like, bingo. I guess. Yeah, yeah. And I just did it for her off of a favor. Um, didn't even know what to charge her. I sent her a PayPal invoice with no LLC for $200 <laughs> and spent ample hours on it, wow. relaunched it. And the next day she was charting in the top 40. That's crazy. And she called me and said, one, don't you ever charge less than 200 or don't you ever charge me $200 again. Yeah. Send, resend me an invoice for 1200 because you just fixed a problem for me. Right. And two, I hope you go do this for a lot of people. Right. And four months later, 
Epic was born. Wow. So many gems there. Um, <laughs> and I also saw it in your eyes when you talked about your son. Yeah. I felt that. Yeah. So that's the drive and the motivation, at least a huge part of it. Oh, yeah. So the Stranded Phase, there's a lot of similarity between that podcast and Three Questions, because Three Questions, we like to start around failure, how people deal with difficult times and moments. Because to your point, one of my drives and motivation is I'm about to turn 40 this year, actually, in three weeks. Congrats. Right? Milestone age, of course. And for, just to be very transparent with you, Jess, for a large portion of my life, I felt like a failure. Mm. I felt like I was behind the ball. To be very honest with you, I never really started having success until my mid-30s. Um, so I was what you would call like a, a late bloomer. So that's not late blooming. But, but that's how, how you feel. Everyone's time is dead. Yeah, I know, but that's how it. you feel, right? And so the reason why I did this podcast is because you have social media. We're always so good at showing the end product, the yeah. end result six months 12 yeah. months and then for that average person they're seeing this and they're like what's wrong with me when yeah. to your point there's nothing wrong with me because mm -hmm. everyone's journey is different right. and so i came up with this three questions podcast and one of the things i always say at the end is sometimes you don't need to learn anything new you just need to hear that somebody else went through it too yeah right Exposed to, to it. normalize failure because just part mm -hmm. of the process so with that being said the stranded phase, you said you'd ask these questions. What would you do when you're crying, when you're at your lowest moments? So my question is to you, what did you do in those moments? And what was one of your most difficult times that you went through? It's so funny because I think you're sitting across from the table thinking because you saw me on stage that I'm successful <laughs> um, and I'm still failing. Mm. I'm still failing all the time. I'm in the middle of a failure right now. Like, but you start to just exercise that muscle and it stops feeling like failures. And I think one thing you learn as an entrepreneur and a business owner and somebody that just learns resilience right. is let me get through this faster right. so that I can just get the lesson right. and move on. Like I've, I have a failed attempt at marriage. Right. I feel like failed attempts at love are right. some of the hardest things on us. Like I have, <clears throat> I, I tried a business move with my business a year ago and invested a ton of money in it only for on the back end for people to tell me like, why did you do that? That's, you were already doing the thing that was working. Why, what made you think you needed to do that? And I've lost money and tried to build an extra part of my team because of that. Like, right. and it doesn't even, it's so funny because I remember when these things used to hit really hard mm -hmm. and now I'm just like, okay, cool, moving on, right. you know? And it's not that it desensitizes you, but it's like, how can I get through it faster? Except that I can be, two things can be true. Mm -hmm. I can have made a poor decision. I can mm -hmm. be wrong. I have my, may not assess the situation properly, or I may have just trusted myself and have been wrong timing, wrong place, wrong time, whatever. Right. And what can also be true is I can still be successful. I can still make my way through it. I can mm -hmm. still be okay. I can be sad and successful. Like I can right. be both. And I think just learning to exercise that muscle mm -hmm. has become my greatest strength of like, it doesn't make me less than. Wow. It doesn't make me suck. You know? Does mm -hmm. that make sense? No, no it, it makes, makes perfect, perfect sense. sense. Um, also, I'm curious to know if you're open enough, of course. Do you have any kind of personal hacks to go through those difficult moments? Like some people have like maybe a playlist or they lean into their faith or what have you. Oh, my gosh. Me and God. <laughs> the way I be praying. Listen, I was praying this morning. Like, Listen, listen. We, we twinning right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You hear your girl? Yeah. Um, uh, obviously prayer um, yeah. but I think a another hack that um, I don't want to go too deep but like yeah. I'm a big journaler I journal mm -hmm. every day um, my journal is filled with letters to God yeah. letters to myself mm -hmm. um, I even have a thing I call the perfect day right. and sometimes when my day I just wake up and it sucks I write myself a letter about the perfect day and I pick a random day in the future literally give it a month a day a year right. and I will write what it um, smells feels right. tastes like what i'm doing and it's funny because it's always a very simple moment it's not mm. me gracing a stage or right. it's like me riding in the car and i can smell the air with the window slightly down and my son in the back seat like cracking yeah. up at something and like and i can just imagine and then i can also be reminded that like my life is full of way more moments like that than it is the moments that hurt and feel really really hard so right. i think journaling has been really special for me um I think another is I'm a big proponent of therapy, mm. very specific modalities of therapy. So yeah. I've done things like EMDR, right. um, which is eye, eye desensitization, eye, eye movement desensitization, 
See, I'm gonna mess it up. It's called EMDR. Just look it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's incredible. It brings you back to your memories so that you can restore the memories, relive them, and then rewrite them right. and refile them so that they don't trigger you or feel the same way. Yeah. Um, somatic breath work has been really powerful for me. Mm. Yeah. So I do a lot of. Um, I've, I've stretched myself to try a lot of different modalities of therapy, and they've been exceptionally life changing. Like so helpful. Right. So. I love that. Breath work is something I recently got into. I it's did some, amazing. Did some guided meditation and he talked about breath work. I was like, really? Just changing your breathing? Game changer. Game changer. Game changer. I've taught my six-year-old, like, you can yeah. take three deep breaths anywhere and it moves the energy in your body, your emotions, which are energy and motion. Right. Um, it moves the energy in your body and you can literally change your, your emotional state with your physiology. Amazing. So being that you are this kind of podcast guru, can turn podcasts around, if you had to give one pro tip to that podcaster, maybe they're just starting, maybe they've been doing it for a year, but they're still very much in that infancy stage. Yeah. If you had to give one pro tip, I know you're going to keep all your gems no. for your services, but like, what's one pro tip you would give? I think pain of... If you have a vision, make it clear. Mm. Speak to your folks. Um, and I, this is going to sound really silly, but I always say like, one of my favorite, I think we've made the mistake of allowing podcasting, like there's all kinds of types, right? So there's like mm. entertainment, there's politics, there's all these genres basically right. of podcast right. types. But I think um, in your, mine and your market, there's become this obsession with them. Um, marketing your making your podcast a marketing tool for yourself and in that we've mistaken um talking about ourselves all the time talking about what we do all the time which i get i understand there can be podcasts about marketing expertise and like our expertise but i think if we if we gave our listeners a place to go that either called them out to where they currently are where they're going or what they want to be a part of they won't leave and we take them on the journey with us. So I always think, when I explain this, I always think of like making your podcast episodes and your podcast title names that fit these things. So like, as a woman, I would think um, back then, the stranded phase was where I was at. Mm -hmm. I was tired of being stuck. Mm -hmm. So I wanna know what you guys are doing to get out. So the stranded phase was where I was. Right. You know, where I'm going would be like a mommy millionaire or, you know, quit the nine to five, or like, I'm just thinking very clear concepts, right? Mm -hmm. um, where I want, things I want to be a part of, right? So like, Gold Digger podcast. Oh yeah, I'm a gold digger. Like people want to be a part of a community. Right. Um, and then I think the, something we're seeing rise up is kind of popular for catchphrases that resonate with all of us. So like, mm -hmm. the most popular therapy podcast being like, I'm fine. Right. Which is a catchphrase that everyone says or when they're in therapy. Is, with, um, is what it is. Camera exactly. Camera like these are phrases that people say right. in those cultures and silos right. of right. people that are just like us. And we got to remember our podcast listeners are just like us. We're going to attract people that right. are just like us, either four years behind us, two years behind us, or where we currently are. Yeah. And so, how can we kind of tap in to the listener? Easy. Build a story around yourself. Like, what are the things you needed when you were where you were, where you wanted to go, and what you wanted to be a part of? Answer those questions. You'll be fine. Amazing. I love that. I, I wish I, I took that last <laughs> part, but I think three questions is general enough where I could expand upon that. But um, as we wrap up, Jess, um, I'd love it if you could share, if you have a, a mantra or a quote that you live by currently. Oh, my God. There's so many. Um this is you're, this is gonna this is funny. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not. It's something that I've just. It's a lesson that I've seen on repeat in my life, and this might resonate with a few and not many. But um, you can't live what you can't live one way by day and another by night and expect results. Mm. And so I think when people have an itch and a calling on their life, right. um, God will con continue to check you. Right. Um, because it's almost like He's like, I gave you a football field and you're playing in the corner. Got you. Like. Right. You're either going to give everything to what I have given you or you're going to get out of the way. Hmm. And I think that comes in the way of like, when I was young, I think about it in ways of like, every time I did something stupid, I got caught. 
And I thought I was like unlucky. No, God was like, baby girl, I got something for you. Quit making stupid decisions. I've given it to you by day, but by night you want to be a fool, Mm. right? It's like I was feeding the fool in me. Jeez. Guess it's not even Sunday yet, man. (laughs) (laughs) It's not Sunday yet. It feels like it. The sermon is is happening. The sermon is happening. And I think in our adult life it becomes like... um, the desires we feed into, yeah. whether that's food, um, fake intimacy, mm-hmm. you know, uh, depression, like the things that we feed into, yeah. like, oh, I'm trying so hard, I'm working so hard, but, um, you know, I'm I'm doing things that I'm feeding into desires that don't feed or grow me. Right. And it's like, God's like, no, I have this thing for you. And I'm mm-hmm. not saying that we have to be so pure. I'm just saying, like, we distract ourselves so easily um, when the sometimes the path is clear and, and we're the problem. We're right. we're we're choosing distraction. We're choosing avoidance. Right. We're choosing not to conflict. Um, we're making it. We want easy, right. and it's not meant to be easy. It's so interesting you're saying that because I was I'm reading a book right now, um, and it's written by a pastor, and he says, "Why are we advocating for the things that are holding back? It's like we always want to like keep them. yeah keep yeah. them." And it's crazy because yeah, I see a lot of us doing that because we realize we have these flaws, but we're like defending them to the point where they, they become like this reoccurring self-fulfilling prophecy it's like yeah i get it you you dealt with this issue but now you're just like you're advocating for you're it you're fighting for your flaws yeah but you won't fight for your growth crazy right that's amazing <laughs> well jess um i know you're a busy woman and i thank you for blessing us here on at this podcast mobile summit. podcast at the podcast what summit. a lesson uh, so for all my listeners and my followers if they want to get in contact with you absolutely. if they want to work with you collaborate what's the best way for them to do so absolutely so you can follow me where i'm the most fun at is um on instagram at mm-hmm. jessica hurley h-u-r-l-e-y underscore um big pink big pink picture and then excuse me um mm-hmm. You can check out my show, Rich in Real Life, on all podcasting platforms. And you can also check out the other shows we produce, the 30-something shows we produce at epic.co. And I want to clarify, it's E-P-Y-C, and it is an acronym. It stands for Evolve Past Your Consciousness Media. So it's E-P-Y-C. Amazing. Well, guys, as you know, I always like to end with, sometimes you don't need to learn or see anything new. You just need to hear that somebody else went through it, too. That's it. Uh, Me and Jess are out. Peace and love. Until the next time. Thanks, guys. All right. Amazing.